so I have a few cars out here. Uh, I figured what I'd do is a bit of an update on my Kyosho Laser ZXRR and the Schumacher Cat 2000 EC. Uh, I consider these in the same class, if you will, because they both have 13.5 uh, brushless motors in them, so they would both be used for the classic four-wheel drive class at uh, the Vintage Nationals. Um, for this one, really, you know, I didn't change anything on the suspension. I just uh, replaced the steering servo because the, the previous one had some issues uh, with the trim at the center. If I move the trim a little bit to the left or right, uh, it, would, it would go quite a ways uh, to the left or right. It was, it was not proportional. So there was some issue with, with the servo. So I replaced it. Uh, so now this is, you know, in tip-top shape, if you will, and I can give you a more accurate or a fairer uh, look at how this runs in basement testing. And then for the CAT 2000 EC, I made a few uh, small changes. Uh, I changed the front rake plate, which is this plate right here, uh, to increase uh, the front rake, which should give me a bit more uh, caster as well as kick up on the front arms. And I also increased the droop at the rear uh, to try to help with landings. And basically, I don't know if it's, uh, if it's easy to see here, but the way the shocks mount on the, the arms, there is uh, a ball stud here, right? It's kind of the same with the front, there's a ball stud here. And uh, if you want to adjust droop, uh, you know, other than changing the shock length, you can also try to change the height of this ball stud here. And you can do that by just unscrewing this or adding spacers or whatever. Uh, I just so happen to have extra ball studs that have like a built-in spacer and I put them here. So I added those and I also increased the uh, 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 stroke length of the shock shaft. So I just unscrewed the, uh, uh, the ball end on, on the bottom of the shock by a couple of millimeters. Uh, so that should give me a bit more rear droop and help with landings. So I figured I would compare these two face to face because they both have very sharp steering and uh, they both sort of feel really good uh, when running. So let's start with the laser. Uh, let's plug this in, plug this in. So really again with the laser uh, it's not going to drive any different, it's just not going to have you know servo centering issues. So if we go over here, let's just get a good take of uh, that that's kind of where corner radius is. Pretty good, you know, reasonably sharp. And as far as jumping goes, see very level. Like I can punch it off the jump and it's just level and it lands nice and smooth you know it doesn't uh, the front doesn't kick up uh, you know like uh, some of my other cars the rear doesn't kick up it's just a nice even car nicely balanced lands nicely doesn't slap the ground or anything there the nose was up a little bit but that might have been how I took off the jump. Let's see. So yeah, I'm happy with this. Another jump here. So there, the car took off a little bit off center, but it does. It doesn't get unsettled when landing. Uh, it just lands nice and smooth. It doesn't like roll or anything. I noticed with like my RC tens. Um, they tend to do that. If, if I land a little bit, you know, cockeyed, they really don't like that. Um, I'm not entirely sure why. I haven't quite figured that out. But this is a solid car. Okay, so now that you see what this car is like when it actually has a working steering servo, let's compare that to the CAT 2000 EC where I made a few setup changes. So I'll put that aside. We'll 
plug this in here and here and then uh, we go back this way all right there we go So despite the fact that I have a, a larger caster angle on this, it still has a very tight corner radius, a bit tighter than the laser. As you can see, you know, last time when I had the, the lower angle rake plate, when I got on throttle and I was uh, while turning, it had a kind of a push. Now I don't really have that. It actually rotates pretty nicely. hard to complain here in terms of handling. Okay. Straight jumps. That's better. Right, it doesn't, I mean, there's a little bit of slapping on the ground, but it's not too bad. It's manageable. Um, pretty level. pretty good. I'm happy with this. This is a very drivable car. Very sharp handling too. Okay, so that being said, now the question becomes, have I changed my mind about what cars I want to take for four-wheel drive, or which ones I would want to, uh, to race next? Um, so when I first did this CAT 2000 EC with the other CAT 2000 in this basement testing series. I talked about how the the normal CAT 2000 with the stand-up shocks that felt really good. This one not so much. Uh, after the changes I made to the rear droop and the front rake plate, this does seem to drive better. So I'd say it's a more complete pair now. Um, and so now I have basically a Schumacher pair that's very good that I feel comfortable with a Kyosho pair between this and the Inferno 10E that I feel very comfortable with and a Yokomo pair the 95YZ10 and the 93 Works that I also feel comfortable with um, between them it's really tough to say you know I, I am kind of spoiled for choice here uh, I would kind of be leaning between you know either of the Schumacher pair or the Kyosho pair um, mostly because I don't have as much track time with those as I have with the Yokomos. As much as I do love driving the YZ10s, uh, you know, I do want to have more experience with other cars. Um, so it's very likely going to be one of these two pairs, probably the Kyoshos, um, but we'll see. Right now I think I'm leaning towards the Kyoshos because I have some, some unfinished business with them. Um, so yeah, that is it for this video. And uh, next I'll do uh, some two-wheel drive buggies. So thanks for watching.